Well, along with a new baby comes a long list of big decisions. Where the newest family member will sleep can be one of the most controversial. 15% of parents say they share sleep space with their child regularly, and more than half have done it at some point. It's been billed as both beneficial and dangerous. And as WCCO's Liz Collin discovered, new research on both sides has only fueled the debate. When the Hoopers brought their baby home from the hospital, there was never a question where Tesla would sleep. Yep, she's in the bed right now. Right where her big sister and brother slept before. My husband kind of has his little pillow barrier there. Amanda considers herself a light sleeper. She believes sharing her bed is beneficial to nursing and bonding. And she thinks they both get more sleep this way. It works for us and it's worked for our family. If Amanda is extra tired, a bassinet is nearby. I wouldn't be doing it if for us it wasn't safe. You just don't think this is going to happen to you. You know, you just don't. It's a subject Karen Haugen wishes she didn't know so well. Precious little thing, precious little thing. She met her second granddaughter, Esme, at an Eau Claire hospital within 15 minutes of her birth. Just a very sweet little girl. She shared a summer with Esme and her sister until a phone call came. It was awful. Early one September morning. Just awful. The four-month-old had suffocated on her father's stomach while he sat up on the couch sleeping. You know, it was like, this doesn't happen. And these are two educated people going to college. No alcohol involved, no medications. And it was just unbelievable. No charges were ever filed against her father. So preventable, so preventable. It's been more than three years since Esme died. Her parents divorced shortly after. Despite her grief, Karen considers it her duty to tell her granddaughter's story. Please put your babies in their cribs. Last fall, a study by the Minnesota Department of Health found unsafe sleep environments accounted for nearly all unexpected infant deaths in the state. Of the 56 babies who died, 52 were in what doctors deemed an unsafe sleep environment. Half were sharing a sleep surface with another person. The other half were in an unsafe sleep position. And here's an infant that really had physically nothing wrong with them um, and is dead because of a risk that they faced. Maternal and Child Health Director Susan Castellano recommends room sharing as the best option for parents. A long list of child sleeping products makes that easier than ever before. It's why the health department sticks to its message that there's no such thing as co-sleeping safely. Is that the right message to be sending? In the healthy mother, in the healthy term infant, um, I would say no. Catherine Mascari is a certified nurse midwife. <laughs> She says science supports the value of sharing a bed with your baby. It's love. It's promoting good neurological development, um, less stress for the baby. Biscari believes parents need to be better informed on how to make it safe. A firm mattress away from heavy blankets, pillows, couches, and chairs. Well, she doesn't doubt statistics. She says research shows when a baby dies co-sleeping, it's because safety rules weren't followed. It's put out there in such a decorative manner that you do this, this is going to happen, when the numbers really don't demonstrate that. Amanda Hooper has heard the tragic stories, but it hasn't changed her mind. You know, uh... She considers it a decision best left up to parents, a delicate balance of comfort and safety. We do what works for our family and I just hope that everybody else does what works for their family and that they're safe about what they do. Liz says whether it's a babysitter or a grandparent, experts all agree that whoever cares for your baby needs to know the sleeping arrangements that you are comfortable with. It's important that everyone is on the same page.